October 1st, 2017. That's when the Koenigsegg Agera RS reached the top speed of 277.9 miles per hour, snagging the boasting rights from the previous record holder. On August 2nd, 2019, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus claimed a speed of 304.77 miles per hour. It became the first production car to break the 300 mile per hour barrier. And on October 10th, 2020, the SSC Tuatara became the planet's fastest production car when it achieved the new top speed of 316.11 miles per hour. What do these machines all have in common? It's impossible to achieve that kind of speed without a powerful engine. The Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus was powered by a 1,578 horsepower W16 engine with quad turbos. The Koenigsegg Agera RS had a 1,360 horsepower twin turbo V8 engine and the SSC Tuatara, a 1,700 150 horsepower twin turbo V8. Today we'll go under the hood to look at the most common internal combustion engine configuration, including inline, V engines, W engines, flat engines, boxers, and rotary engines. One of the most common configurations is the inline engine. It's also called direct engine or the I engine. It has this name because the cylinders are arranged directly in a row, usually standing together upright or slightly tilted. This arrangement allows for even or odd number of cylinders to be installed. An inline engine is cheaper to assemble, more efficient, and easier to maintain than any other engine type. That's why most compact, fuel efficient, and midsize sedans have inline engine. But let's compare the inline line with the V engine. A V engine has its name. When you look at it, it has a V shape. The engine has two rows of cylinders which are tilted and directed away from each other on each side. Since the V engine has double rows of cylinders rather than one, the V engine is generally shorter and more compact, so it takes up less space under the hood than the inline engine. Another advantage is that the V engine can generate more torque at lower RPMs since there are two pistons on each side of the engine block. Typically, V6 engines come with more than three liters of displacement, whereas inline fours come with less. An engine like this is mechanically more complex than inlines, so the production cost can be more expensive. Even more compact and equally powerful engine than the V engine is the W engine. If you haven't noticed the pattern yet, the W engine is thus named because it looks like the letter W. It usually has three or four rows of cylinders set standing apart at less than 90 degrees from each other. Remember the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus? It's a W16 engine with four banks, each with four cylinders. The W engine is wider than a V engine. You could say it looks more like a V-shaped engine, but with an additional row or bank in the middle. This W engine was widely used in aircraft during World War II. Later, the three-row layout came to be used, not just in aviation, but also in sports cars. This engine offers phenomenal power in a compact package allowing automakers to combine powerful engines with an all-wheel drive transmission. The downside is that they are difficult to manufacture and expensive to maintain. Examples of cars with this layout are the Bentley Continental FT with its W12 and the Bugatti series with its W16 engine. But now let's talk about some engine layouts that people know less about. For example, the flat engine. It's so-called because the cylinders are located horizontally across from each other on either side of the center axis of the crankshaft. You could say it looks like a V engine where the little V got squished open flat. In other words, the rows of cylinders are 180 degrees apart as they lay horizontal to the ground. This engine was first built in 1897 by Carl Benz, the man who also founded Mercedes-Benz. Flat engines have been used in various transportation types like airplanes, motorcycles, and cars. Today they're less common, but you can see them still being used used by Subaru and Porsche. In fact, Subaru is the only car maker in the world that uses the flat engine in its entire lineup. Actually, they're boxer engines. A boxer engine is a type of flat engine. It's called boxer because the pistons look like boxer's fists that are constantly punching. Boxer engines produce less vibration. To understand this, imagine a rodeo with a cowboy on the back of an angry bull. To win the event, cowboy needs to stay on the bull for eight seconds. Sounds like a quick ride, but those seconds can seem like an eternity when you're trying to balance the force the bull exerts on you versus the torque your weight exerts back into the bull. And mind you, the bull is 10 times your size, so that's 10 times the acceleration. The principle is similar with inline and V engines, where the vibration of the engine comes from the forces of the vertically moving piston, except that the car needs to run longer than just eight seconds. But with a boxer engine, the pistons don't move vertically, but instead they move horizontally, and they move in opposite directions, so they compensate for each other's strength. 
the result is less vibration and smoother acceleration. That's one of the reasons why inlines and V-engines have crankshaft counterweights and a damping system to compensate for vibration from the vertical pistons moving inside. But in a boxer engine, you don't need those since it's self-balancing. The movement of one piston balances the movement of the opposing piston. Boxer engines also have a lower center of gravity since the pistons are positioned horizontally. This gives better cornering ability and makes the car more stable when driving at high speeds. Since the boxer engine is lower in height, in head-on collisions, the engine cannot be pushed into the cabin, but rather stays lower on the floor bed. And it has other pros and cons. Boxers can be difficult to repair because the parts of the boxer engine can be costly. Also, the engine has increased oil consumption. If the boxer engine is properly operated, it can travel about 600 to 700,000 miles. Subaru invests its resources in this type of engine for both their gasoline and diesel models. Then we have the rotary engine. It's used by Japanese manufacturer Mazda. A rotary engine is an internal combustion engine where the rotor is the main moving working element of the engine. So how do rotary engines differ from reciprocating internal combustion engines? In conventional engines, the piston moves to rotate the main shaft. But in rotary engines, the main working element is already rotating and no additional mechanisms are required to rotate. So in a rotary engine, there are no bulky complex crank mechanisms that rotate and take up excessive space. The rotary engine carries out the same operating cycle as a four-stroke engine, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. But at the same time, it also doesn't have a complex gas distribution mechanism, which is usually the timing drive, camshafts, and valve. All of its functions are performed by inlet and outlet windows in the side walls or housing, and by the rotor itself, which opens and closes the windows while it rotates. The rotor is pretty much the piston and connecting rod at the same time, since only the rotors and the eccentric shaft rotate. There are fewer moving parts in a rotary engine, so from a working volume of 1.3 liters, you can get about the same power and torque as a piston engine with a working volume of 2.6 liters. Also, the rotor produces more horsepower per gallon of fuel. For example, the Mazda RX-8 produces 178 horsepower per gallon. That's the equivalent of a 6-liter Corvette C6 LS2 engine with 1,000 1,068 horsepower. Another feature of the rotary motor is its higher resistance to detonation. The main problem with the rotary engine is that it is less reliable and has poor fuel efficiency. The RX-8, for example, has a fuel efficiency of 16 miles per gallon in the city and 22 on the highway. Also, it has a poor emissions rating and it burns a lot of oil since it injects oil directly into the combustion chamber. Now that we've looked at main engine configurations, let's talk about cylinders. Let's start with four-cylinder engine. Most modern cars with four-cylinder engines use an inline configuration rather than the V-shape. These are also called inline four, I-4, or straight four engine. In the late 2000s, government regulations called for reduced emissions and improved fuel efficiency. So the sale of cars with four-cylinder inline engines grew significantly. Today, inline four is the most common engine configuration in modern passenger cars. So much so that the term four-cylinder is synonymous with inline four cylinders. But why do automakers prefer the I-4 over the V-4? Well, inline engines are cheaper to build. And generally, they're mechanically simpler, and a cylinder block and crankshaft can be milled from the same metal casting. Inlines also work more efficiently than V engines and are easier to maintain. That's why automakers prefer the I-4 over the V-4. What about six-cylinder engines? When it comes to putting a six-cylinder engine in a car, most automakers prefer the V-6 configuration over the the straight six. In fact, V6 is the second most popular engine configuration. The reason for that, when it comes to six or more cylinders, you also have to consider engine displacement and space under the hood. Remember how the inline engine arranges the cylinders in a row? This means the inline six is longer in length and takes up more space than the V6. Since the V6 is generally smaller than the inline six, it takes up less space under the hood and is easier to install. It also has a better center of gravity and is ideal for front wheel drive vehicles. The downside the V6 is that it's harder to maintain than an inline six. So are any cars using inline six engines today? Well, yes, of course. The BMW M4 and Toyota Supra use the i6 configuration for increased power, output, reliability, and a smoother ride. So which is better, inline four or V6? 
depends on your needs and preferences. If you want to get more power at a quicker pace to accelerate, or if you need more pulling power to tow a heavy load, then the V6 is better. But if economy and fuel efficiency is your priority, then inline four is the way to go. Also, adding a turbocharger to a four-cylinder engine, you get more power and sometimes can even beat out some naturally aspirated six cylinders in terms of power while still being fuel efficient. A prime example of this is the Honda Civic Type R, which won the title as the fastest front wheel drive production car in the Nürburgring Nordschleife in 2017. It had an inline four engine with turbochargers. What about eight or more cylinders? V8 engines are popular in sports cars and American muscle cars. Of course, there are also V10, V12, even V16, but the V16 has reached its limit in size and practicality. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel for more technology and history videos. Thank you.